dude. I am ready in day six. We are on our way to read 66 chapters in every day. We would do one chapter. So we are we have 60 more chapters to go after today's lesson. This is Isaiah 6. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. In earth as it is in heaven, give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For you are the kingdom, you are the glory, you are the power, both now and forever. Amen. Even in that chapter right there, we say, uh, give us. We're not, we're not walking up by God and just saying, uh, you know, I wonder could I have it. No, give us. Then we say, forgive us. Then we say, lead us not. We are actually... We're commanding. We're making a commandment. We're asking God. We're not. We, he gave us that right. Jesus said, this is what we ought to do. Why should we do that way? Because he gave us it. He told us to. That's the way he said. So I just thought about that today as I was praying. Give us this day. And forgive us. Asking, telling, commanding. He said, command ye me. If you know my word. That means you have a right to speak and ask me for what I say. And I'm not going to deny you your request. That's that easy part of getting along with God is just believing what he said and acting upon it. All right, I'm in Isaiah 6. And let's get into it. In the year that King Uzziah died, I also saw the Lord sitting upon the throne. High. And lifted up, and his train, train filled the temple. Isaiah said, I saw the Lord. I saw him too, right here. I'm looking right in the face, in the mouth of the word of God, and I'm listening. So when I see God's word, I see God. Have I seen God's eyelashes in his hair? No. But I see what he said, and I believe that he said it. So when I do see him, I say, you sound just like your word. <laughs> Above it stood the seraphim, angels. Each one had six wings. I don't know how many angels it was, but he saw them, and he said they had six wings. And two he covered with his face. He covered his face. And with two of his wing, with the next two, he covered his feet. And with two, he did fly. Now, why did he cover his face? I don't know. Why did he cover his feet? I'll learn. And why did he fly? Because he had to go somewhere. To keep it this simple. And one cried unto another and said, Holy, 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 the Lord of hosts. The whole earth full of his glory. So these angels are, you know, I'm just thinking, that why did they cover their, their faces? I guess it's because it wasn't time to see it. But anyway, one thing that they cried when they saw what God had done was holy, holy, and holy. Suppose this was the first day that they actually had an eye view of what Isaiah said he was looking at. And he said, behold the earth. He said one to another. It was as if this is their first time seeing it. It could have been. So they were like, look at what God did in earth. And the posts of the door moved at the voice of him that cried. And the house was filled with smoke. Wherever Isaiah was, even the door, the entrance of the door had to make itself noticeable that he moved. When God's, when people tell the truth, like the angels told the truth, people move. Things move. 
when the truth is being made known, wherever you are, it'll be a noticeable um, act, noticeable action taking place. Even things have to move when God speaks. At the hearing of the one that spoke, and he said the whole house was filled with smoke. The presence that let you know that God is in this place. Not the kind of smoke that will choke you. The kind of smoke that goes up before the nostrils of God when our prayers go up before God as a vapor, a smoke, and the Lord receives it. Then said, ah, oh Lord, I, uh, uh, Isaiah said, woe is me, uh-oh. For I ain't ready for this, for I am undone. Because I, a man of unclean lips, I ain't been doing the right thing. I ain't been saying the right thing. And I spend time or dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. I've been, even my friends don't even talk right. But my eyes have seen the king, the Lord of hosts. And God showed up in the presence of a man who recognized that he was God. And the man himself was not. When I started reading the word of God, I saw myself. I haven't put this book down since 1995. I can't get enough of it. When I see this book, I say, oh, Lord. When I looked at Galatians, I saw myself. I have not got out, the, out of the mirror of God's word since I read it. I can't get enough of it. And then it, uh, uh, Isaiah said, I have seen the Lord. When I look in the word of God, I am seeing the Lord. So I have no excuse. One time I saw, I had a dream. And I could just see the vision of, I was at a, um, a, a, a um, like a circus come to town. And I saw the image of this face that represented who I thought was Jesus to me, not that I could tell you what it looked like, that wasn't it. But that thing kept on coming around, and every time he, I was jumping up and down because I saw it. And every time he looked at me, he looked at me like that. And that thing would go and rotate back around. And I said, and I got kind of confused because I'm jumping. Hey! And he looked at me like that. And the third time that face came and looked at me, I woke up. I said, what is the meaning of this? The only way he could halfway get my attention was in my dreams. And I wondered why his face was like, why you ain't smiling? I'm so glad to see you. He was like, because the way you see me is not who I am. It wasn't until I opened up this book, I actually saw why he did not have a smile on his face. Because I was trying to get him, get to him by religious works. And ever since I've been in that work, he'll tell me, he'll say, Brenda, that ain't gonna work. And, it, and whatever I'm doing, it'll just be him keying me in to say, make that decision this way. And I'll, I get tickled. I get, I, I, I laugh because he's never looked at me like that again. He'll, he'll correct me now. Talk too much. He said, my eyes have seen the king, the Lord of hosts. And if you have looked into the word of God, you have seen who is in charge. It is not about what, you know, we measure people about what they look like. God has said, no, what did he do? You married a man by what he looked like, how about what he does? You married a woman by what she looked like, what can she do? Don't worry about what I look like. Just watch what I do, says the word of God. Then one of the angels flew, flew one of the seraphims unto me, came straight down there. He recognized Isaiah having a live coal in his hand. a live coal in his hand, which he had taken with the tongues from off the altar. This thing coming all the way from the altar of God. 
And that angel took that thing by the tongue that got that 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 uh, cooking or that fire device, grabbed one of the hot coals, and I guess by the time he flew down from what Isaiah saw that thing had cooled down a little bit. <laughs> oh, they have an imagination. And he had that thing in his hand. But he took it, he got it from the throne with the tongue. That thing was hot. See, around the word of God, you, you just can't be. He said, no, it's, it's hot. Wherever the word of God is, it's, you got to be careful how you touch. And by the time it got to the man that was, who was supposed to be touched by it, he had it in his hands. I was, I'm assuming that it kind of cooled off. <laughs> And he laid it upon my mouth. I'm going straight to where you say you have problems. I'm going straight to your lips and what's coming out. I'm going to put that, I'm going to burn that conversation that's not lying over God in your life, whatever you admitted that you're wrong with. And he laid it upon my mouth and said, Lo, this has touched my lips. And my iniquity, all that stuff. Maybe he had been lying and cussing. I don't know what Isaiah was doing. But he said it was not good. But the angel said, you confess your sins, Isaiah? He said, yes, sir, I did. And he said, let me, me burn the mess up out of you. And, he, and, he, and the iniquity is taken away. And he said, them sins that I have been speaking was purged. Totally dissolved. Isaiah said, I ain't forget that. Because anybody can stop me from doing what I was doing. You got to be God. But Isaiah said, I ain't scared of nobody. But when that, that angel took that thing that God said, go down and burn his lips. Go down and touch his lips. He said, burn. He said, touch it. And the angel obeyed God. And, and, and Isaiah knew that he was a different man by speech. <laughs> Also, he said, I didn't just get touched. After I got touched, guess what I did? I saw, and then I admitted, and then he did something about what I admitted, and now he said, I also, I heard. Now I can hear from God. I saw him. That means he made himself known. I confess. That means I'm a mess. And then he touched me, and he said, now I can hear. Also, I heard the voice of the Lord saying, what did you hear clearly now that you're not talking, Isaiah? Whom shall I send? And who will go for us? Who, who, who can I send on this expedition? Then said Isaiah, I, 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 here, I, I. Isaiah must have liked to talk, but this time he said, I want to go and speak in your behalf. And God did not say, ah, ah, not you. He said, and he said, go. Permission granted. And this is what I want you to do, Brother Isaiah. Tell this people, the same ones that have given me uh, grapes that are uh, no good grapes. I want you to be good grapes. But you've given me a Wicked grapes and evil grapes and sour grapes. What the word we called it yesterday? He said, in the midst, and he said, and I found, what did he say yesterday about them grapes? Wild grapes. Wild grapes are grapes that are jump up and down and shout and dance and don't nothing, know nothing about you. He said, you wild. Wild grapes. Still call you grapes, but he said, you wild. Then he said, I, okay, and then he said, and he said, go and tell this people, the same folk that's wild, hear ye indeed. I give you permission for them to hear what you got to say. He said, go to this people, what? That they hear indeed, but understand not. And they see indeed, they see me, but they do not perceive. How is it that we can hear, but we don't understand? How is it that we can see, but we don't get it? What keeps us from understanding that 
This is the Lord's view. This is the Lord speaking, and we can't hear it. This book like this. Closed. He said, they read it. But they don't understand what they read. You got to want to know what God's word is saying in order for it to come. They didn't want God's word. They already said, okay, I did my religious duty. And the Lord, he said, they ain't, they ain't ready for me. Then said, I, Lord, how long am I going to talk to people that act like that? How long am I going to be teaching a class where the kids just getting a grade and passing to the next grade, but they're not learning anything? He said, I'll tell you how long. Then said, I, Lord, how long? And he answered. God answered. He said, let me tell you how long. Until the cities be wasted without inhabitants, until it ain't nobody there. He said, keep talking until nobody's there. I want them to know, I, look, I've been talking to you and talking to you and talking to you. Now I'm going to send somebody to watch you uh, not be there. I have been talking to you and telling y'all to stop the foolishness and you won't listen. He said, I got people talking. He said, but you shut down everything. He said, keep talking, Isaiah. Keep talking. Keep talking. Keep teaching them the word. Keep saying it. So they will have no excuse to say they did not have somebody that I sent. He said, until the sinners be wasted without an heaven, they're not listening. And the houses without man and the land be utter the desolate. He said, when you start seeing the city uh, um, being desolate, nobody's there. And the houses, there's no life in it. Do you know that's how long you got to do it? Because what is going to happen will be manifest. When you stop seeing growth, then you know that's how long it's going to take for me to do what I got to do. Because they won't listen. And the Lord have removed men far away. He said, I'm taking these folk a long way from here. And they don't even, they, they just go out there and tell them. And once you see they're not listening, I'm going to get rid of these folk. Because I don't know, I already told armies to come on like no way. And they're going to get the job done. They don't want to hear what I said. And there be a great forsaken in the midst of the land. All of this good land that I brought you from Egypt to. He says, it's getting ready to be empty. When you see stuff start falling apart, keep teaching until you don't see nobody. Keep teaching. They either going, if people don't hear me and change, they going to find themselves out of my blessing um, palace or place. Yeah. But yet, he said, I'm going to tell you something now. Keep preaching. He said, I'm going to tell you what's going to happen. But yet, it, in it shall be a tenth. It's going to be a tenth of them. It's going to be a few. And it shall return. It, I'm telling you right now. This thing is going to be desolate. It is going to be a few that look like they ain't going nowhere. He said, but yes, they are too. Because I have spoken. And they did not hear. And they coming back and wherever they are, they shall be eaten. Just as sure as I tell you, I don't care if it look like you hanging on by three. He said, you coming down. I told Isaiah to preach until you don't see nothing. You don't want to hear? If they don't come to me, that means they are being removed. He said, I want to show you that if, if it ain't but 10 people there and thinking they're going to keep on doing what they're doing. He said, no, they're not. It would be as a teal tree. And somebody said, that's a turpentine tree. And as an oak whose substance is in them. Whatever's inside of those trees is something on the inside of that tree. He said, you got some substance inside of you, oak tree, and this other kind of a, a tree that said it's in, related to the oak tree. Some call it a lime tree. Some call it a turpentine tree. He said, when they cast leaves, 
when the oak tree casts leaves or the leaves drop off, they don't drop leaves like everybody else. Like, for instance, most of the trees before winter come in, they have a certain time they begin to fall down. Oak trees and these trees don't fall like that. They got a particular time of the year that they fall, the leaves come off. See, I'm looking at God and saying, you're different from the rest of the trees which represent people. Your leaves don't fall as quick as some of the others. I, I deal with my people. The, the people that don't want to hear right, your leaves fall commonly during the same time. You can predict what he's, but my people, I, I, I let you, because I know you know better, and I'm working with you, but you don't want to listen. Your leaves coming down too. But they may fall at a different time, but if you don't do right, yours, you're going to lose some blessings too. Your leaves indicate that you got fruit. And since you're, you don't want to act right, they're going to eventually begin to hit the ground and everybody's going to see your nakedness. There's nothing under you but a whole lot of talk. He said, as an old tree whose substance is in them, just like the fruit of the tree is in them, when they cast their leaves, so the holy seed shall be the substance thereof. In other words, I'm hearing, and I heard different people talk about this particular thing, saying that that that, that tree is going to have something at the end that's going to be there and it's going to return back. I'm seeing this in a way that he is saying, I am going to let your leaves fall because you're not producing anything. Just like the old tree, at a different time, their leaves fall. I think theirs fall off January and February. That's a different time than all the rest of the leaves. And he said, and just like, so the holy seed, the substance thereof. In other words, inside of you already, already is the word of God. The substance of the knowledge of God is all God has in you. You just want this. That's the word of God inside of you. And when I expose you, then somebody will see whether or not you're going to return back to what you know you're all about. I know that you are mine. I know that I know all of my sheep. I know everybody's mine. I also know mine that won't listen. I'm going to let your leaves come down off your tree. And when you look at yourself, you're going to have to be like Isaiah said, I am a man of unclean lips and I dwell around people that ain't, don't talk right. I got you. you in, I'm in you now. If you got my word, I'm in you. You just won't act right. That's how I see that. Father, I thank you for your word today. You again have made it simple for me to understand it. And I thank you. And Father, and everybody else that get the other revelation, may we all grow and no, because you may have some that see this passage a little differently. But when I see you, I see it in an easier way than I can see it. And I can tell my granddaughter. So don't let God have to drop your leaves to see what you really made out of. But on the inside of you is the word of God. Let it be known on the outside. Stop muzzling God's word. And begin to let the whole world see that you talk and behave like the Father. Thank you for your word. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen.